Now, Laravel has some authentication features right out of the box. Let me show you a couple. I'm going to open up a new project in Laravel. So we'll say Laravel new example. And then once again, I'm going to use the dev flag because 5.4 is just a week away from the time of this recording. But for you, you don't need the dev flag. So we'll CD in there, open this up in Sublime. And then if I switch back and run PHP Artisan, I'm going to search for auth. And you'll see that we have this section, make auth, and it scaffolds basic login and registration views. All right, let's try it. PHP Artisan make auth. Now, uh, it's going to do a number of things, actually. Uh, it's going to give you some views. If you go to your route slash web file, you're going to see that it adds this section right here. And this will register a number of endpoints for registration, for login, for password resets, things like that. Now, let's do our migrations. So I'm going to go to my NV file. And you'll see that we're sticking with the, the default MySQL connection. But if we go into config, database, and we scroll down, you'll see here is where these are referenced. So your config files have, as you would expect, all of the configuration for your project, but then your secure passwords that you don't necessarily want to commit to version control and hard code in these files, you store those in the NV file like this. And then in the config file, you will reference it by saying NV and then the name of the uh, environment string. So this means if you have things of your own, uh, for example, like maybe you have a, a strike key or something like that, you could say stripe key equals this, and then wherever is necessary, like your services file, you could come down here and then reference it. And you can see we have a little boilerplate here to get you started. That's the way that works. Anyways, there's a number of drivers that you can use, so you're not limited to MySQL. In fact, you could use SQLite, uh, you could do a number of things. If we go back to that database configuration file, you'll see here's our connections. SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, and there's even third-party options you can use. All right, so I'm going to use SQLite, which is a file-based database. So we can get rid of all of this stuff and then create the file. Let's go see where that needs to be. If we scroll down to the SQLite connection, the database, again, that's just a path to where the, the file database is. You can see that's in the database path, which is the path to your database folder. And then it's looking for database.sqlite. So let's just create that. I'm going to use touch. Touch that file and it'll create the file for us. Okay, next, close these out. We're going to switch back to the terminal and run PHP Artisan Migrate. Okay, it's looking pretty good. So let's open this up within the web browser. Now, it looks similar, but you will see we have these two new sections here. And this is specifically because we ran the make auth command. We go to login, and we have some boilerplate to get us set up. So you'll see that as part of running that command within your resources views section, you have this auth folder that contains all of the views you need here. And also in the process, it gives you a layout file. So it actually does quite a bit. And what you can do is run that command and then just begin configuring the views exactly the way you need to. But it's kind of like a, a turbo boost to get you up and running very, very quickly. Anyways, we have a login page and we also have a registration page. So let's say John Doe, john at example.com, and then a password. Register, and we're signed in. Laravel did everything for us behind the scenes. How cool is that? And you'll see it redirected us to this home view. Let's take a look at that. In my routes web file, we can see route get home links to a home controller. Okay, so let's go to that. App, HTTP, controllers, home controller. And now right here, you're gonna see within the constructor of the controller, middleware. So what, what exactly is middleware? Uh, you know what? I'm going to dedicate an entire lesson to that uh, in the future. But to start, think of uh, the way I describe it is middleware is sort of like an onion in that there's many layers. So as a user visits your website, they can go through these layers and you can register any number of middleware that the request has to be piped through. And this will give you uh, single classes that have the opportunity to perform some kind of logic or verification. So for example, if we go into this kernel file, you're going to see a list of middleware. These middleware are run during every request, or at least every web request. Let's take a look. Notice they have names. So we're going to check to see if we're in maintenance mode. Let's just see it really quick. What does that look like? OK, if the application is down for maintenance, which means if you run a command called PHP artisan down, which you might do in production a lot, it moves it into maintenance mode. So now when you switch back, you'll see you get a little be right back page, which is great. 
So that's what this particular middleware is checking. Let's bring it back up, PHP Artisan up. So the request goes through that. Next, it validates some size, it trims some strings. These are actually brand new to 5.4. Next, you'll see some other things. So when we are working with a web request, we do things like encrypting cookies and starting up a session and verifying the CSRF token. This is exactly what we learned about a few episodes ago. And this is the class that's responsible for it. But now if we keep scrolling down, you're gonna see route middleware. Think of these as optional middleware that you can activate whenever you need to. So a good example is imagine a particular route should only be available to your subscribers. If you're not signed in, if you're not paying, you don't get to access this page. You can use middleware for that, and in this case, auth. So that means if we go back to the home controller, this says every action that's on this controller needs to be piped through the auth middleware. So as a result, if we switch back to the home page, and let's open that in a private session, you'll see that we're not signed in, so it doesn't allow us to visit that page. And instead, it links us to the login page. Great. But if that was not there, I'll comment that out, and we run it again, I can see the page. And in this case, you are logged in. It's just hard-coded there, but we're not actually logged in, as you can see there. So in addition to that, you have things like uh, can. It Does the user have permission, or does the user have the assigned role to perform this action? We're not ready for that yet. Uh, guest would be the opposite of auth. So certain pages, well, you should only see them if you are a guest. It might be a, a sign-up page. Well, if you're already a paying subscriber, why would you be able to visit the sign-up page? You don't need to. And we don't want a situation where a signed-in user is trying to sign up again. So you could use the guest middleware for that. And you can even limit it. So you could say this middleware, but it should only apply to the index method and that one alone. Or you could say apply to everything except the index method. So it's very, very flexible there. Now, should you want to dig into this a bit more, you can of course go into your auth controller and you can see things like registration controller. So let's take a look. Here's the page slash register and here's the controller that's responsible for it. And specifically, you'll see this trait that just hides some of the logic, but you can always visit it directly. All right, let's see. Show registration form. So that loads a view called auth register. Auth register. So that loads this view. And once again, you can modify this exactly how you need to. So yeah, this is a really good choice when you want to rapidly get set up with a new project. And as you'll find, uh, especially as you do this more, setting up registration, setting up authentication, setting up password resets, uh, it's time consuming and boring and tedious. So maybe I want to log in, but I forgot my password. I click on that. I can type in john at example.com and that will send me a password reset link. Now, in this case, it's failing, but just because I haven't set up my uh, mail setup yet. If we, uh, we'll talk about mail quite a bit, but if I go to my .env file, let's go down to my mail driver, and you'll see it's using SMTP out of the box. Let's see what my options are. I'm gonna go to my config folder, down to mail. And once again, I'm just doing that quickly, but we're going here. And you'll see that, once again, there's a lot of drivers supported. So I could use Mailgun or Mandrill, those APIs, or SparkPost, or I could just log it to a file. So why don't we do that? Okay, let's give it another shot. Refresh, john at example.com, and there we go. We've emailed your password reset link. But in reality, what it did was it used the log driver to perform that email. And as such, you'll see it within storage, logs, laravel.log, and let's go to the bottom. And here you go, here it is. You are receiving this email because we received a password reset for your application, and then here's the link. So the user, We'll click on this, come back, that will send them to this page, and now they can reset it. New password. And now that updates their password and signs them in. It's really, really useful. 